Good morning everybody. It's the most perfect summer's day here so I'm really looking forward to working in the garden and um, I'd just like to say hello to Avril who I met a couple of weeks ago in Galway. It was lovely of you to come up and say hello and I'd just like to say a big thank you to Suzanne who sent me an e-card. So opening that up this morning was such a treat. Thank you so much. And coming outside is such a treat as well, because like the e-card, we've got all these wildflowers along the hedgerows here. And it makes me think of abundance. So I just wanted to talk about abundance today because we have so much abundance in the garden and we have so much here in the hedgerows. They're rich places full of food and medicine and biodiversity. This is where the insects are coming. This is where the birds come and the small mammals live. So, for example, we've got some nettle seeds here, which we can harvest. We've got the beautiful hawthorn, which we can still take the little um, end, ends of. And we've got the brambles, which are profuse in flower. So we can expect a lot of blackberries this year. So the hedgerows are different to the, to the fields because Lots of plants have been pushed out into the hedgerows and this is the, the edges, the edges of the wilderness and um, these are the most interesting places because the fields here now are quite sad and neglected I suppose. One time when people were farming for a living all the fields were drained and maintained and fertilised and now there's no there's no living to be made in agriculture so a lot of people have had to um, go into other jobs and there's no real thing now of handing your farm onto your son or your daughter because there's not no livings to be made which is sad because with the end of farming is the end of a culture and it's the end of part of our heritage but in the meantime we can still enjoy all the abundance that's here and there's lots to come as we move towards autumn. Sometimes when you look into the hedgerows and the wild edges, you see just a magical, a magical place. The thyme, the honeysuckle, the moss, the rocks. I mean, it just triggers something in me. I don't know what it is, but I just think it's pure magic. So back home after our walk and the dogs are tired and um, this is our little oasis because we are trying to increase the biodiversity of this garden. So we've got an amazing array of colours here. We've got pink, we've got crimson, we've got red, we've got purple and lilac, yellow. And it is just really, does your heart good. Everything is just looking incredible. And to feel, to see this much abundance makes you feel so grateful. And when you feel grateful, you're happy. So our mission here has been to um, create an abundance, to co-create it with Mother Nature. So we've had some difficulties because the land is rocky. We've had to put things in wherever we could, but it's always done with the intention that we are working to replenish the land 
to give something back and the more you give back by planting, the more you receive in beauty, in food, in medicine. And so just a little bit of effort gives a great abundance of return. I would encourage everybody to plant something, even if it's just something in a pot, even if it's just something in a window box, it's incredible how much abundance you can get from a window box. And let me just show you this little rose. This was a cheap, cheap rose bought in the supermarket. It was meant to go into a planter on a patio, but I decided to just stick it in the ground. And it is just, it's supposed to be a little small thing, but it's created all this abundance. It's very happy here with the rowan tree and the sycamore, and it's growing up the tree now. So it creates, it's just, I just love it. So things can be achieved, even with the worst of land. I've got more of an abundance of lavender than I expected because I'd forgotten that I've planted some outside. So now the lavender in the polytunnel is finished this is all flowering so I've got a second crop and I'm going to use some of this as I usually do but I'm going to keep a few sprigs to make a rose liqueur which is absolutely delicious so I'm going to have to get some roses as well and they're just right along the path here some of these roses are ready to drop their petals, so I'm just going to take them as, as they come off like that. This was just one or two plants and it's put suckers up, so we've got Rosa Rugosa all the way along here now and it just looks beautiful. There's more over there as well, but I can't get to them at the moment. So I'm just going to take some of these roses. Beautiful Rosa Rugosa. So many applications for rose. It is so, I've just used some rose water that I made on sunburn and insect bites and it was so cooling and um, took down inflammation. It was excellent. But I want the rose petals for tea. You know, some teas that you might take medicinally may not be very tasty they might put you off taking them as a medicine. So if you put something like rose in, you're just improving the taste and making people more keen to take their medicine than they would be. Here's a lovely one. And then I can use them in soap and cosmetics and of course cut some for the house. There. I think I'll take these few self heels that I see here. I don't want to harvest too much at one time because then you have a lot to process and things can end up being wasted. So I always practice um, sensible harvesting. You know, you don't take too much. There's so much here. It's going to be here tomorrow and the day after. So I don't need to go crazy today. So I'm just going to take a few little heads of self heal and um, dry those for tea as well. And I have more self heal in other parts of the garden. This was my big mistake. Last autumn, I put in here some um, oats and barley and they were just coming up so high and we let the chickens out to roam as we do every year and they scratched everything up and I just thought, oh, well, I've lost, I've lost my oats and barley and I planted more oats over here. 
But then, to my surprise, lots of little, what I thought were oats, started to shoot up. So I just left them grow and I thought, oh, some of the oats hadn't germinated at the same time and now they're coming up. And I nurtured them and I encouraged them. And then I realised when the seed heads came on them, look, you can just see the difference here. This is oats and this is what began to come up. Same type of grass stem, but very different seed heads. This is what I had and this is couch grass. And this is not what you want in your garden beds or in your herb beds because it um, produces lots and lots of rhizomes that run all over underneath the soil. And indeed, look at this monstrous pile that I've pulled out once I realised what it was. So I've got an abundance of couch grass, which most people would be horrified at. But this is another medicinal plant. So this is excellent for the urinary system. It reduces inflammation, so it can help with uritis and cystitis and prostatitis and things like that. So I've got a nice abundant supply now of couch grass and I've got more space to put in the celery and the beets here that I didn't have space for because I haven't really harvested anything yet. So, you know, it was maybe a problem, but I've turned it to my advantage and I've got even more abundance from the garden. It just depends how you look at things. I suppose um, some people have commented on my little small kitchen. I don't need a kitchen that's any bigger than the one I have. I don't need a yacht. I don't need a brand new car. You know, there's so many things that um, people see, material things that people see as a sign of wealth and well-being. Those things are not wealth and well-being. The abundance is here in nature, in your garden. And even if you don't use the plants for any specific purpose, you've still got an abundance of beauty. And that is a miracle in itself. Here's another example of our abundance. All the trees are doing so well. They're so strong and they're so green. We've got a little bit of bindweed on this one, which I can easily take off. Um, and look at all the meadow sweet. The meadow sweet is everywhere this year. I often wonder when we get such a profusion of one particular plant, is there going to be a lot of 
people who need that remedy. So meadow sweet is for pain, it's for stomach upsets, headaches. So, you know, when you think of people living on their nerves, a lot of people do get upset tummies. So maybe, who knows, we'll just wait and see. But this whole field was absolutely, see how high the sorrel is here on the dock. It was this high and I've had to strim it. And the reason it became so high was we had a very damp spring, warm and damp, and my strimmer was out of action. I mentioned this before, but um, consequently everything's grown up so high and I just thought I'll never be able to get through it. But I did, I've, I've strimmed it roughly, I have to come again. But the point is, all of this now is going to dry out, it's already drying, it's going to make bedding for the chickens. So what again was a problem, just change your perspective and I now have an abundance of chicken bedding. So isn't that great? It's just wonderful really, and everything's wonderful on a lovely sunny day. But I do think, you know, we, we forget how fortunate we are. Wherever you are, wherever you live, you are surrounded by abundance because that's how Mother Nature works. That's what she's always giving us. And we just have to show a bit of appreciation and open our eyes and then we can see it. So I think I'll just go over there and have a look at some of the ragged robin, which is a beautiful little wildflower. And then I'm gonna get in and process my little basket of herbs, the roses and the lavender. And I also had to pick a little bit of St. John's wort as I went past. So I hope you have an abundant week with an abundance of love and pleasure and see you next time. Bye for now. There's a little ragged robin, so bright and pretty and pink.